back to my YouTube channel. So, if you're new to this channel, I provide videos regarding digital marketing and SEO. So, please feel free to check out my other videos on this channel. There's plenty of good gold nuggets regarding that uh, information there. And all in all, um, if you do find a lot of good value and benefits from this video, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Thank you so much in advance. So, in today's video, we're going to be covering do SEO plugins actually benefit SEO and do they more importantly help you rank? So, let me briefly answer that question for you now. No, SEO plugins will not help you rank, especially in 2020, and they will not help you benefit your long term, short term, or medium term SEO goals. So, you may be a bit perplexed or confused and wonder why that is. So let me explain that. So, all in all, um, there's a few facets that I'll be looking into, which will be content, technical, links, and just the landscape of SEO and Google, what's been happening there over the last few months to years, and explain some of these changes and how these plugins actually won't benefit you too much. So, let's start off with a little good quote of mine. So, SEO plugins, are the essentials but they are not enough to get you over the line so once again they're essential but they're not enough to get you over the line you cannot rely on them for pure rankings and SEO results they only help optimize small bits and pieces and they won't exactly help you get those big results that you're after without having a tailored SEO strategy understanding your demographic and understanding the landscape of SEO especially in 2020 so I'm actually going to cover that in a bit more detail. But before I do, let's quickly start off with content. So how do plugins and content work hand in hand and how you actually got to factor in different aspects of content marketing and content SEO that these plugins won't help you in. So let's use a very popular example of Yoast. So I'll put up an image for you guys over here. If you're not familiar with the plugin Yoast, it's a very popular plugin for WordPress content management systems. And what it is, it's essentially a plugin that helps you with certain technical components such as your robots or text, your sitemap. It also helps you with other aspects such as uh, off-site optimization of your content, which is your page titles, your descriptions, and helps you with a bit of on-site content such as your H1 tags. So if you guys aren't too familiar with the criteria that Yoast uses, they have a few options in their free and premium um, plugins that help you to kind of see how well your content is optimized. So for those who aren't familiar, I've actually put up an image as you can see on the screen. It's kind of like a traffic light system. And this traffic light system goes red, green, amber. So green obviously being the best amber being moderate with room for optimizations and red being complete overhaul requires optimization of every aspect that they're looking at. So you may wonder what if I optimize everything to get those green ticks or green little circles, what would that help me achieve? So that would basically mean that it only helps you get the bare minimum. So let me repeat, it only helps you to get the bare minimum of actually getting your content optimized. So to get a good content strategy and good content uh, in SEO in place, we have to factor in so much more that no plugin on the market would enable you to do. And this would be essentially how well your content is written for the user, not for the search engine, because that is a very big misconception. Too many people write for the search engines, but not for the users. So how relevant is your content in relation to the user's search intent or search query? So I'll put up a little image of what I mean, a bit of a Venn diagram. So you have SEO, then you have relevancy in the middle, and then you have content. So relevancy would be matching that searcher intent. You would have to factor in how well your content is matching that. Then you could even go even more into it and you could look into how well it's factoring in in terms of intent for a, a few criteria. Is it informational? Is it transactional? What type of information is the user searching for? And is that content meeting that criteria that the user wants? And another thing to take into consideration, what type of 
content are you trying to rank for? Is it like a head term? So it could be like, are you trying to rank for something such as life insurance that has a lot of competition? Are you trying to rank for something that's more long term? I'm sorry, I should say long tail. And that is something very important to take into consideration when writing content. What's the structure of my content? Does it flow well? Does it have headings, subheadings, um, syntaxes involved, um, grammatical errors? These are all big things to take in, into consideration when looking at content, which none of these plugins factor in. Um, another thing to take into consideration it would be, um, and this is important, is an actual quote from Google that I'll put up on the screen right now. Search engines exist to help people find what they are looking for. To do this, search engines must provide a diverse set of helpful, high quality search results presented in the most popular order. And that's from Google Search Quality User Guidelines. That is something to take into consideration. Is your content relevant? Is it helpful? Big things to factor in. So when looking at content, you just can't rely on Yoast or any other plugin for that. So let's move on to technical. So all in all, there are some technical components that you can look at, such as um, optimizing your page speed and a few others. And you may think that's enough. Oh, I've tinkered with my page speed a little plugin or my WordPress or other CMS such as Magento, etc., or Shopify. And that might be enough to get you over the line. Well, unfortunately it's not. Because little do you know, uh, your website may be played with other technical issues that these plugins do not identify and that's important to remember a lot of these plugins don't identify these problems they only help you optimize bits and pieces so one thing i have to factor in is do a technical audit of your website look at actual proper seo tools that are dedicated to helping you identify technical problems so you can look at using screaming frog you can look at using SEM rush you can look at Deep crawl. These are all popular SEO tools that SEO professionals such as myself and other members of digital marketing and overall users, webmasters, whoever they may be, use these tools. So you may think to yourself, ah, okay, I'll fact that it in. Uh, I'll start using these tools. I think that's the best approach to look into is look deeper than what these plugins identify because these tools are more specialized and maybe to help you identify certain problems apart from page speed it could be you know you have a HTTPS problem as in your certificate may be expiring soon or invalid um, you may your, your website may not be HTTPS at all you may have redirect problems you may have indexing problems such as incorrect use of no index tags there may be other problems on your website that you can also look into such as google search console they help you identify technical problems on your website and it is a free tool that you can use so i also have a video on how to fix google search console errors if you're interested in that i've put a card up above so there's a lot of things to take into consideration regarding technical so once again these plugins do not provide too much detail and you'll get much more detail out of using these tools that I mentioned before. And if you aren't too certain on how to use these tools, please feel free to reach out either to a technical SEO professional or SEO professional overall and they can help you to identify problems. Or if your website is a little bit smaller, you can also just feel free to look into SEMrush, Screaming Frog, or deep hole to help you identify these problems. Now, finally, let's look into links. So, with content, technical, and links, all of these things all play a major role into how your website will rank. But looking at links is fairly important because there's two types of links. There's internal and external. So external are from third party websites so websites that are linking to yours and internal are ones that you can control so these are through anchor texts on your content so these could be those little hyperlinked words that you see on certain websites you click onto it and it takes you to another page on the website so the benefits of having external links benefits of having external links is that these provide authority signals um essentially to your website to indicate that Google has some authority, uh, so, sorry, 
to indicate to your website that it has authority and Google views it as a bit more of a popularity contest. So the more external links you have, the better your website will rank. Asterisk, that depends on the type of quality and the relevancy of the links that your um, website is receiving. So looking into um, internal links, it helps Google to identify kind of a better idea of the context and structure of your website. So definitely if you are talking about various topics in your website and you have other pages that provide more value, you can include a link that goes from one page to another on your website. So these are what two areas of optimizations that you can look into if your website isn't ranking too well. You have to uh, look into, you know, does my competition have links? Do they have good internal links? And these are things that you can kind of assess and figure out when analyzing um, your backlink strategy from internal and external links. So let's go into the landscape of Google. So there's been a, quite a lot of changes uh, recently. So one of the bigger ones in relation to how Google provides search results is BERT. So I've actually put up a video, I'll put up a card above. And this video, if you do choose to watch it, explains what BERT is and how it actually impacts search results. So just to give you a very quick summation, all it basically means is that Google will help to understand content and context of your search query. So if a user does tend to search something, Google will understand it better and provide a better relevant and helpful result. So that's going back to that Google quote that I mentioned before. Google is all about providing helpful and relevant results. Because with that in mind, the more helpful and relevant results that you that Google provides, there's a greater chance that users will go back to Google search engine and use them over and over again. And this will also help to benefit Google to to basically um, showcase more ads, etc., etc. So you kind of understand the point. So it's all about Google providing the most helpful and relevant results, and this is how content technical and backlinks all play a role and i hope now this provides a bit of more clarity to why plugins alone won't help you get the results they're looking for or it only provide you with a bare minimum that you need but you need so much more to factor in into a holistic seo strategy that covers these areas in greater detail to ensure that your website will rank in search results and to surpass your competition and to provide better um, and more helpful information for users that are searching for specific information. Alright guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. And once again, if you got a lot of value out of it, please hit the like and subscribe button. See you next time guys. Have a great one.